How is it going folks? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 37. Today we are kicking off season number 6 and today we're in the Skybet League 2. Yes, we are finally into the Football League. And heading into this season, the board have got some lofty ambitions. Automatic promotion to League 1 is the aim. And while it's safe to say when you look at the season preview, we probably should be doing that on paper, certainly competing at the very top. We are the bookies' favourite sport promotion, Crew and Exeter following in our wake. And when you look at the Media Dream 11, of the players in the Media Dream 11, over half of them, in fact six of them, are our players. However, our star man and undeniably the best player in this league is injured. Yes, Murphy and Goma out for up to the first four weeks of the season. And whilst the fixture schedule isn't too rammed, one of the three games that we're going to be doing in today's episode is against Exeter, one of the favourites for promotion away from home. Really would have liked him for that one. So when last week we had a few little transfers going on, I can report that in the 10 days that have gone on since last episode until now, there's been no more transfers. Let's run the intro. I'm ready to see what this team can do playing at an all-time high. Let's do this. Today, by the way, is episode number 37. I think I mentioned that earlier, but in case it didn't, it is episode 37. I do want to start with just a little bit of a thank you. Uh, end of last week, of course, we did the two-part transfer special where I kind of had to awkwardly split it in the middle. I was a little overambitious with the amount that I recorded and thinking I could condense it down. I was a little bit apprehensive about it. I was worried people might feel like we were dragging it out for the sake of it. I can assure you to edit over an hour's worth of footage takes a mighty long time. Very appreciative of all the kind words and support, even if there weren't that many transfers in the first part, I think in the second part we more than made up for it. And just to recap those transfers that we made last episode, only three additions to the team for now. Callum Moreland, the first of the new additions, he came in, we lost a couple of centre-backs over the summer, and well, I needed to replace them. Moreland is, well, a bit of a beast in the air, not necessarily the craziest defender from a mentals point of view, but the boy can jump. Of course, I think the most exciting of all the players we picked up, Andrea Andrani, this guy, San Marino International, 16 caps to his name. I can assure you he's going to start the first game of the season. I really like the look of this guy. And of course, the final of the new additions we made, not the most exciting, Gabe Forsyth. I don't know why. It looks like he's done a fart and everyone smelt it and everyone's trying to work out who it is and he's trying to conceal his guilt. 21 years old, good defensive midfielder um, in the making. I'm training him to play defensive mid. He will be good there eventually. He really is just a utility man on the bench though. Of course, the big headline of last episode was the sale of Isaac Pritchard. £1.4 million received. And with that, well, we've just about covered the costs of those youth facility improvements that are going on. Just as a reminder, uh, the board decided we'd spend £2 million to upgrade the youth facilities in December. We'll find out if that was worth it. Totally forgot to update it. Updating it right now, we've got a new home kit for the season. Shout out to YT as always who makes all my kits. New kit is active and Goma's injured, but in spite of all of that, I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be for this new season. Our first opposition today are going to be Grimsby Town. Media prediction of 20th. They have been consistently a mid-table team. Fairly nice, easy game, I feel like, to get started at home. QS not winning this game now. So like I already mentioned, Ngoma not available for today's game. Elsewhere, Jake Garrett, our left back, is currently suspended to start the season. He was a naughty boy at the end of last year. What it does mean is that Stevenson is going to come in as our backup left back. And elsewhere in the team, in the midfield, Pritchard and Edwards are going to be trying to fill the gap between them of Ngoma. I feel like the, the departure of Ngoma on injury is one of those things where I can't really bring in a player and expect them to replace him. I've just got to hope that with Pritchard and Edwards on the pitch, their combined creativity is going to make up the deficit. In terms of the rest of the starting 11, Keely McLaughlin, Ricky D in the defence, one new addition of course. Andrani, the San Marino youngster, makes his debut. Realised here, I've got him at right centre-back. He's left-footed. That said, McLaughlin's also left-footed. Callum Morland, by the way, also left-footed. I have a weird left-footed centre-back fetish, it turns out. Andrani doesn't have a side preference, so I guess we'll play him at right centre-back. Moving on into the midfield, Spencer is going to start as our defensive midfielder. He has shown a catastrophic decline as of late. I'm not sure what this is all about. Hopefully it's just, you know, the off-season. He, he really enjoyed, like, unhealthy food over the summer. We'll whip him into shape. Of course, Timmy, who is currently the highest earner at the club on £1.5,000 a week, is going to be at right centre-mid. And up top, Goldsmith and Jude are going to start 
start the season. Last year, Hamilton and Goldsmith really battled it out for that striking position. And whilst I do have a bias with Hamilton coming through our youth intake, I think the ultimate reality is Goldsmith, at least to start the year, is just that little bit better. Now, as I mentioned previously, we are doing three matches live today. We've got this game, Port Vale, who are in the championship in the Carabao Cup, following on from that, an away game against Exeter. I've already done the Exeter away day last year, but fret not, Port Vale away for away day fans, it's coming. I kind of forgot you get all the proper Football League branding when you play in the EFL. Very exciting stuff. Not as exciting, though, as the fact we are on the attack early on. Edwards shoots... And it's hit the crossbar, hit the ground, and somehow not gone in. That would have been an insane goal to start the season. Andrani trying to keep it alive here. Spencer, who ate all the pies, gives it wide to Stevenson. And while that cross there is why Stevenson isn't meant to be our starting left back. Goldsmith laying the ball wide to Ricky D. Turns his back on his man and lays it back to the San Marino youngster. Have I mentioned today that we have a San Marino youngster? In case you can't tell... I am obsessed. We are on the ball here, bringing it forward. Stevenson, can he put in a better ball this time? He absolutely can. On a plate for Goldsmith, lovely finish. Keeper had no chance. Stevenson didn't really set the world alight as our backup fullback last year, but this season we're now allowed seven players on the bench. He will be on the bench often to bring on if one of our wingbacks isn't playing so well. He can play on the left, he can play on the right, and right there, that was a good little ball into the box by him. Ricky D throwing on the near side. Ricky D had the second highest average rating last year, if I'm not mistaken. I'm expecting big things, and oh my word... We've doubled our lead. It's 2-0 and it's Edwards with a sensational finish into the bottom corner. Little bit of build-up play in the wide area. Little one-touch passing, I have to admit. Uh, Timmy's cross there did just deflect into Edwards. But maybe he planned it. Maybe it was calculated. Corner for us here, though. It's Timmy over it, whipping it in. It's cleared away, but Edwards is going to keep the play alive. To the back post it goes. Goldsmith is there. And Eastwood makes another stop. It's only 2-0. We've blown this kind of lead in recent years semi-frequently, it feels like. Although now Ricky D alleviating the pressure. Pritchard, Jude, gives it to Goldsmith. The striker holding up the play, going all the way back to McLaughlin. This feels like one of those long highlights where something's got to happen at the end of it. Timmy, oh my word, it's a great ball to Pritchard. Bursting through the middle, Eastwood makes another save. I hate their goalkeeper. Five minutes left of the first half here. Grimsby still waiting for their first shot on goal. Our wingbacks have been superb. In the midfield, we are winning the battle. Jude, I complained about the fact he wasn't tipped to be top goal scorer in the league. Right now, he has one of the worst ratings of any player on our side of the field. He's looking complacent. He's played poorly. I might sub him off and give him a reality check if he doesn't step it up in the second half. You can see here by the average positions, by the way. Look how far we are up the pitch. Then look at where Grimsby are with the ball. They are just not able to get out their half. We are penning them deep in. And with 15 minutes played of this half, nothing's happened. And then just as I was about to take off Jude, he's gone and got an injury. We're already without Ngoma, and whilst I know he's not played great in this game, I am praying that this injury for Jude is nothing too serious. Whilst we're here, I am going to make one further change. I'm going to play Gabe Forsyth at defensive midfielder. I know he has no knowledge of this position, but giving him game time here on off the bench is going to benefit him. And with Brody Spencer already on a booking, it just feels like it's not worth a risk with him. Forsyth over the corner. Short to Edwards. Back wide with Forsyth. The sub, Gabe, the man who did a sneaky trump. Gives away the ball. Sadie now with it for them, although we win it back through Edwards. He has a man in support in Stevenson. Back inside to Forsyth. Timmy to Hamilton. Didn't start this game. In the box, looking to prove me a fool. And, well, we've been given a penalty from absolutely nowhere. That was such a soft one. Goldsmith is going to be the man to step up. 20 years old, our vice captain. Jude would have taken this. Goldsmith, in his place, steps up. Makes it 3-0. It was a super soft penalty conceded. We're not going to complain. Grimsby Town trying to ruin our clean sheets. I mean, we save money, don't we, if we concede? This is the Rugby Town way. We've done it. We've conceded a goal. No clean sheet bonus to pay out. I'm happy. I'd love to know the amount of times in live commentaries especially. I've gone three goals up and then conceded one to make it 3-1. It's, it is a ridiculous amount of games, I feel like, at this point. Keeley going to look to go long. Five minutes and counting. Pritchard wins the second ball, lays it off to Goldsmith. He is now going to bring it forward into the wide area. He's got his backup having just got one goal from the penalty spot. And now he's going to put it on a plate for Hamilton. On off the bench, first goal of the season for him as well. We have deserved the win in this game. Six minutes of added time makes me think that the Jude injury could be bad. And now Gabe's 
got injured. Well, Shipston, on you come to play defence in mid for two minutes. I'm sat here thinking, surely this is the end of the half. I mean, we're playing over two minutes over the added time. It makes me think the Forsyth injury must have been serious, and it took him a while to get off the pitch. We could make it five here, but even if we do make it five, which we're not going to... I'm just still going to think about the injuries. It's full time here. We've won 4-1, but at what cost? The answer to that question is Jude's out for two to three weeks and Forsyth's out for two weeks. I mean, it's not disastrous, but given the fact we're about to play a team in the championship, the fact we're missing some of our best players is a bit annoying. Ultimately, our aim for the Carabao Cup, I suppose, is to be competitive. We take on Port Vale in three days' time. Can't really expect to beat the newly promoted championship team, but we'll try and give it a little bit of a go. In some ways, this competition might end up being a distraction if we do go on a run in it. That next game is three days away. We have got some wage budget and transfer budget, so I might still do some wheeling and dealing in the next month of the transfer window. It's actually quite an early start, it feels like, for the league this year. And actually, speaking of transfers, Chimura um, released by Ross County. Yeah, we've seen this movie before. I was keeping on Ross County youngsters. They've released this right back. No idea if he's any good, but I've offered him a deal. And now Elsewhere, for the American football fans out there, uh, I'm trying to sign Jesse Marsh as my assistant manager. Apparently he's waiting on a work permit, so he's already agreed to join us. It would be a rather mad addition to the backroom staff, wouldn't it? So it has been a hot minute since the last away day, but we're back again now ahead of game number two to take on Port Vale. And if you're not familiar with Port Vale, logically you'd think Port Vale. They must play by the sea. Wrong. In fact, Port Vale are one of the few football teams in the world of football not named after a town or place. Well, they are named after a place. I think they're named after like the house where the first ever meeting for the football team was held like over 150 years ago. Either way, Port Vale, north of Stoke. Now you know. First things first, from above, solid car park. We're in the big leagues now. You know, League 2, you expect to see proper car parks. Of course, this is a championship team, I suppose. Football stadium itself, I mean, doesn't quite look fit for purpose at the moment. I mean, what was what was going on when this was all set up? It's doing a red carpet walk at Port Vale. Elsewhere, you've got lovely parks to the south of the stadium with ping pong tables. Everyone loves some ping pong. And to the north, training pitches and just lots of lovely green grass. We love to see it. Now, the stadium is surrounded by roads, and I'm hoping, given the fact they are a football league team... There's options. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do away days for. Look at those dots. I will say from the aerial view, it looked like a really big stadium. It looks a lot more humble from here. Here's the car park. Here's the back of one of the stands. Port Vale, home to the Valiants. And if we go down here, the Google Street View van went into the car park. They knew I was going to come down this route. I will say this whole stadium feels like it's on a massive hill. I hope the pitch is level. Here is the main stand. It still feels quite humble. I mean, it doesn't even really look like a football stadium at a glance, does it? It. But look, you know what? Exterior views are one thing. I want to see the interior. And there are dots here, there and everywhere at Port Vale. This is actually quite a cute little stadium. I don't know if I like the fact there's such a big gap between the pitch and the stands. It's not even a gap for a running track. It's like they've chosen to make their pitch smaller for some reason. Maybe it had some other purpose. Maybe it's like a greyhound track or something. Just make it up law for the Port Vale stadium. Oh god, it's been a while. We're on a point and click adventure. For, new for newer viewers to Park to Prem, they're not familiar with this. This. I'm about to get lost in a football stadium, aren't I? Oh, you can have a wedding at Port Vale. Who wants to get on the dance floor with me? Can we can we go on the dance floor? The street view guy never... Oh, he did. He went on the dance floor. He knows how to boogie. Just got to check. Uh, what, what have they got on tap? Guinness, Carling, Strongbow, Thatcher's Carling. It's not an inspired selection, is it? Here is a view from the executive boxes in the main stand. This is a very cute and nice stadium. I like it. Great seat art. You know, they've just written out the full name, but sometimes that's what you need to do with your seat art. I will say, not sure about the carpet in the, in the executive area. It's giving off kind of old church vibes. I've got a triple header today. I shouldn't be dragging out the away day. I just want to know where all the different things go. Oh, here we have a timeline of Port Vale Football Club. Where can we go? Is it just me or does this look like the actual meeting rooms? You know, in Football Manager, the backgrounds when you're having chats with your players and stuff. This is the background they used. And here is a view from the hallowed turf of Port Vale Stadium. It's a unique stadium. It feels like a proper old school English ground. I love this stadium in the corner. Like, it's not, it's not curved round, is it, like modern grounds? No, we put it at a 45 degree angle and it works. 
which I feel like I've gone back to the 90s, and that's a good thing. Vale Park, great car parking, lovely view around. They had a timeline of the club that I could only find the bit between the 50s and 70s. So presumably nothing's happened in the last 50 years at Port Vale. Stadium itself was absolutely amazing. Lovely surroundings. Shame about the drink selection behind the bar at the wedding venue. 6 out of 10. Okay, with that review done, we're going to get into this Carabao Cup game, half expecting us to get spanked against Championship opposition, but we'll give it a shot. So for this game, we are forced into a couple of changes. Of course, Jude is out, so it's going to be Hamilton and Goldsmith starting up top. It does mean our striking options for today's game are Sam Pitt and Joe Richards. And between them, they're not two players I wanted to have too near the first team. We're not too far away, injury-wise, from being reliant on them. In terms of the rest of the team, Stevenson's locks down the left-back position. Garrett is still suspended. Forsyth is injured, so Shipston comes onto the bench. Although, in this competition, you get nine subs. So everyone's on the bench, pretty much. Okay, we are playing in our iconic black and red strip. Of course, we've used this for a few home games over the years. I feel like I might prefer the away colours to the home colours at rugby. I don't know if that's a particularly spicy take. I just feel like we play better in red and black. Speaking of which, we're a goal up in a minute. Callum Goldsmith scored his third goal of the season, and now he's doing some river dancing to celebrate. I did mention earlier, didn't I, that Edwards and Pritchard basically together need to do the creative work of Ingoma. With passes like that, they're doing passes that Ingoma wasn't capable of. Of. What an assist that is. We've scored one. We've now got a set piece in a wide area. It's whipped in Edwards under it. Not necessarily the player I want to have contesting for headers, but Pritchard mops up the pieces and switches the ball to Timmy, who wins the header. Goldsmith down to Spencer. Could go wide to the right. Ricky D is lurking. Or... We could go left. McLaughlin, left centre-back, splitting nice and wide. Gives it back to Goldsmith. Hamilton, Timmy, wide to Ricky D. Acres of space for this man. Players queuing up in the middle. One of them is Goldsmith. And his header there hits the outside of the post. We could have doubled our lead. Probably should have doubled our lead there. Halfway through this first half, there's been two shots for us and one shot for them. Don't be deceived by the two highlights in our favour. We've been far from dominant, although actually we are starting to have a little bit more in the way of chances. And now we've got a corner. Timmy's whipping it in. Andrani's there. And he heads it just over. We've had 61% of the ball yet again. Our average position versus the game against Grimsby isn't quite as high up the pitch. But in spite of that, we've dominated the play. We've dominated the ball. And against Port Vale, we are a goal up away from home. This is massive. Stevenson, man of the match, by the way, in the last game, Stevenson. Got one assist to his name. That ball there, lacking a little bit of quality. But Ricky D is there to sweep up the mess, put it in. And Isaac Pritchard finds the back of the net. It's 2-0. I've gone very high in my voice there, mostly because I was surprised it even fell to him. We do play with the low crossing instruction on, and I do feel like driven crosses like this are just dangerous. There was a mad scuffle in the box. Keeper came marching out, but Pritchard nipped in there first to get a shot away. And while with us two goals up, I'm beginning to feel quite confident in us. That confidence could be stripped away. If that header had dropped in, Keeley, I think, had it covered just. Okay, Ricky D's on a booking. Nobody like that. I'm going to bring in Batumba and elsewhere, Timmy struggling a little bit in this game. Shipston is going to come in to play as the box-to-box -box midfielder. Gets more than three minutes today. If we do get a third goal, at that point, you'd say it's game, set, and match. Although, if we did get a third goal, I'd be sticking some money on us to concede one goal because, you know, football manager things. Batumba in the wide area, fresh off the bench, whips it in Goldsmith. I feel like he headed one wide last game. He probably should have headed that one on target there. There's 20 minutes left in this game. You might have thought Port Vale would be the team on the attack, but to be honest, that's not really been how this half has played out. They've had three shots on target. They've created a little bit, but with no meaningful breakthrough, you feel like a third goal now would be the decider if we could get it. That said, we've given the ball away in a compromising area, and now Benarus is going to switch the play Keeley collects it, and this it feels like one of those long football manager highlights, doesn't it? Keeley cosplaying as a banana in goal for us, throws it wide to Batumba. Andrani, by the way, he's from San Marino. Don't know if you knew that. Uh, he's given away the ball there. They're now on the attack. I don't like this. Andrani's caught flat-footed as well. Webb scores. It's 2-1. And like I said last game, we're known to blow two goal leads. Andrani to Shipston. I've actually blamed Andrani there. No, it was Shipston who gave the ball away. It wasn't like it was a bad pass. It was a shocking, I think, touch or first time pass by Shipston. The fact I can't tell if he was trying to pass it or it was a bad touch indicates how bad it was. He lost the ball for us. And it's a one goal game with 15 minutes left. Whilst the Carabao Cup isn't the be all or end all, it was always important to start off this season well. 
even if we were to get knocked out in this game in extra time, I'd still be pretty happy with this performance on the whole. However, in this position here, I'm now just hoping we can see things out. I've got one last sub if I want to make it. I'm going to bring in Moreland for his debut at left back just to kill a little bit of time. A big meaty man from set pieces in case they throw people forward. And in the end... They didn't do anything. Also, I have just noticed here, I could have made more subs. I only made three, they made four. I guess you get five subs in the Carabao Cup. I'll remember that for next time. I don't want to take the shine off things, but based on the number of players for Port Vale that have played two games, um, it is safe to say they did play a very rotated team for that last game. So a great result against them, but... Considering they're the favourites for relegation from the championship and they were playing the B team, let's not get too carried away. Although I suppose on the flip side, we are without Jude and Ngoma, debatably our best two players, whom aren't going to be fit for the next game. We've got another game in three days' time. I thought the fixtures were more spread out at this level. It's not starting like that. Next game up is Exeter. They started their season with a defeat against Warsaw away from home. With a media prediction of third, they're going to be expecting to bounce back at home. This next one's not going to be easy. It's a sad day for all involved in Rugby Town Football Club, but Liam Francis, our current assistant manager, he's not really good enough, is he, anymore? Been at the club for a very long time. This guy has been my assistant manager for many a year, but now it's time to say goodbye because Jesse Marsh is coming in. Yeah, I think like this is the biggest signing we've ever made. And if you were wondering about Marsh's career, of course, he was at Leeds United. Then in this universe, he went to Fleetwood, was sat by Birmingham City. Two years later, he's decided he wants to be our, uh, our assistant manager. Make of that what you will. Anyway, I think for us, he's going to be pretty blooming useful, even if he is on £2,000 a week. He's on three times as much as I am. In fact, no, I tell a lie. For some reason, I thought I was on £700 a week. I'm on £200 a week. Right, I say I'm asking for a new contract. Anyway, while that's all going on, we have got a slightly more pressing matter. Exeter in the league. After one league game, we sit top of the table on goal difference. Of course, we were expected to beat Grimsby. Don't know if we're expected to win this one necessarily. Exeter, media prediction of third. They have a strong team. Diabate here is their key man. He is absolutely mad, isn't he? He's very, very good. He's on £4,200 a week. That's a lot of money. Now, in terms of our team news, a couple of players still out injured. Ngoma and Jude out. Forsyth not available. But some good news. Garrett is back to play left back. And he is now learning to play left back. I think that's one of the reasons why he's had a decline in his overall ability. I'm not going to get too alarmed by this. I feel like sometimes when you train a player in a new position, their current ability doesn't move up to compensate for the new position, so you get this mass decline. But ultimately... He's in the media dream 11 at left back. He's still a blooming good player. The rest of the team is going to remain unchanged going into this one. Edwards and Pritchard so far have been absolutely sensational at centre mid. Need them to continue their form in this one here. Okay, corner early on in this game for us. Garrett is over it, whipping it towards the back post. Andrani under it, Pritchard mobs up the pieces and forces a sensational save out the keeper. Corners are our weapon, aren't they? Corners are our thing. Garrett on this occasion is going to whip in. Andrani's under it, wins his header. The keeper makes another save. Feels like whenever we play against teams, the goalkeepers just turn into the best goalkeepers in world football. I hope that's not the story of this game going forward. Their goalkeeper's on a 7.3 rating after seven minutes. Okay, well, familiar story. We have another corner. It's whipped in. It's headed, well, I was going to say goalwards, but it's not headed goalwards at all. They've actually dealt with the danger relatively well on this occasion, Exeter. But plenty of players committed to the attack for us. And that could be our downfall because McLaughlin lays a wayward pass and suddenly Exeter surging forward, players in the box, it's floated in, Andrani wins his header, but Reed is there to crunch the crossbar from range and Keeley holds on to it. Okay, this is it's all action to start. I did think with that Keeley save, the chance was gone. Maybe not. Goldsmith is now coming up the other way. He's going to shoot. He's going to score. What an insane start. It's 1-0. I genuinely thought when Keeley made that save, I was going to get a moment to catch my breath. But instead, Route 1 football, Pritchard, the advanced playmaker with a headed assist. Not really why I brought him into the team, but a good pass. And Goldsmith with a really nice finish at the end of it. That is Goldsmith's fourth goal in these first three games of the year. The man has started the season on absolute fire. I mean, maybe we don't need Jude. We've already had one chance kind of begin with Keeley launching the ball forward. Is he going to launch it forward on this occasion? You bet your bottom dollar he is. Goldsmith can't win the header, but Edwards is there to win the second ball. And now Pritchard, who assisted the first, 
had a chance to get us a second on that occasion, shot off target. Exeter playing with a whole load of players behind the ball. You can see here, super defensive shape. They are very, very narrow and compact in terms of their average positions. And with that in mind, and given how narrow we like to play, going to change things up here. Going to tell the players to focus the play down the wings. Let's try and get Garrett and Ricky D into this game. Let's try and use the full width of the pitch, just spread out the play a little. Whilst we've created a lot, we've not found that second goal to calm the nerves. And at the break, 1-0. Absolutely deserve it. The work's not done yet, though. Going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. They are fired up for this one. Exeter, just as a reminder, one of the favourites for promotion. A very good team. A win against them here, away from home, really would be a statement result if we could pull it off. Spencer, Pritchard, Hamilton. Difficult angle, but not too difficult for him. Who needs Jude Soonsup Bell? He came through our youth ranks. He's been in the team for the last couple of years. And Norman Hamilton continues to do it in the Football League. It's rare we get products of our academy and park to prem saves that can meaningfully contribute. Can't get my words out. He is definitely contributing and more here. I am going to make a couple of changes in the wider midfield areas. Connor Coventry and Shipston coming on. Timmy and Edwards coming off. Edwards and Timmy, not the best of games. Given the fixture schedule to start things, I do need to rotate things around. I feel like some fresh legs in the midfield could be just what we need to see out this game. Maybe even get a third goal. So we're going to look to bring the ball forward here. Are we going to score before the subs even happen? Hamilton back to Ricky D. Timmy now edge of the box. Ricky D. Timmy. Lovely build up play. He goes for a shot. And that will be his final effort of the game. He's coming off after that. Don't know why he tried to shoot from there, really. Exeter have to change something in this game. They had such a defensive shape. And while we've managed to break it down, they've done so little going forward. And we could be about to break it down again. Goldsmith in a wide area. Back to Shipston. Puts it to the back post. Ricky D is there. Great touch. Spencer. Coventry shoots. Hits the crossbar with a curvaceous effort. And, well, the pressure it is, it is relentless right now. Exeter are going to be having nightmares of sky blue players running at them. And now a penalty has been given. Lane, I think, gave it away. He's already on a yellow card. Is he going to get sent off here? The commentator said he was wasting time. Has he just been sent off for time wasting? I think that's what's just happened. Shipston, fresh off the bench, a good penalty taker, steps up. Can he finish it? He's tried to penenka it and kicked it straight at their goalkeeper. I'm so angry. The rare penenka in the Football Manager match engine. When it goes in, it's amazing. <laughs> when you see it kicked straight into the hands of the other team, it's annoying. And then Hamilton does that. I'm fuming. I mean, at this point, Exeter are down a man. They're playing one player up front. We are going to win this game. It's not a case of will we win it, but rather, I think at this point, by how many? Shipston, who missed that penalty, half tempted to sub off. We'll keep him on the pitch for now. Try and give him a chance to redeem himself. As Exeter give away another penalty. Is Goldsmith's going to take... You know what? That is wise. We'll let Goldsmith take this next penalty. I mean, please don't penenka this as well, Goldsmith. That is all I ask. He's going to step up left-footed, sends the keeper the wrong day way. He can have them for the all future games. I'm so angry with Shipston. I'm not even happy about the fact we've scored a third. I mean, this bloke has 12 penalty taking, 12 composure, and 10 finishing. For our team, that's quite good, but I am, I'm fuming with him. Five minutes of added time at the end of this game. Finally, Exeter realise, hey, maybe we should stick on one less defender and go more attacking. They've done it. It's too little, too late. Their goalkeeper got an 8.0 rating. Man of the match at the end was Goldsmith with his two goals. We are, I assume, with that result there, going to maintain our spots at the top of League 2. It's a very good start to the season. You can see here, I've got a whole load of scout reports coming in for various players. There's loads of Spanish players that popped up on my scouts' radars. Daniel Martin, I mean, he doesn't look bad, does he? He looks like a little libero, but I don't, I don't really need him. He's not. I don't need a centre back who can't run and has no physicals. Losa here doesn't look too bad either. I've been looking at the Spanish youth leagues off the back of finding all those Spanish players that turned me down over the summer. I feel like Spain could be a good spot to make the most of our second ESC signing. Not entirely sure when we're going to be back just yet. Of course, League Two has three automatic promotion spots. We're still in the Carabao Cup. I've also got the Papa John's Trophy to play. I don't like this competition. But yeah, we're in it. I have to play in it, sadly. We'll be back tomorrow for some more Park to Prem action. A month left of the transfer window. Plenty of money to spend if you want to do it. If I was going to add a player to my team, what position do you think I should be letting a player be added in? Let me know down in the comments. Besides all of that, have a lovely rest of your day. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow for more. I'm out.